Go ahead, give him glory. Bless his holy name. Praise the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Thank him for all he's done for you from January to now. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy, worthy to be adored. There's no one like him. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Covenant keeping God, there is no one like you. Alpha and Omega, there is no one like you. Hallelujah, covenant keeping God. There is no one like you. Alpha and Omega, there is no one like you. Hallelujah, covenant keeping God. There is no one like you. Alpha and Omega, there is no one like you. Father, we worship you. Covenant keeping God, we bow before you. Thank God for your faithfulness. Thank God for your support. We bless your holy name, Lord. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, your children are here again this month. Like never before, pay each and every one of them a visit. Let us have an encounter with you today. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Yeah. Amen. Unless someone shout hallelujah. Yeah. Well, shake hands with one of two people and tell them, God will surprise you this month. And if you believe that, let me hear you shout hallelujah. And then please be seated. You know, this month we are looking at uh, the covenant keeping God. And our text is going to be Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy 28. We will just read verses 1 and 2. The text actually should be from verse 1 to 14. And while you are opening your Bibles, I would love to remind you there is no Shiloh hour this morning. Since uh, September is already dedicated during the Holy Ghost service to those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And we already believe in God that uh, latest by the end of this month, in the hopes of those who are considered barren, there will be shouts of joy. Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 and 2. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. 
and all this blessing shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. And then you can continue to read the blessings. God has a covenant of prosperity with his people. As a matter of fact, the covenant says, if you will keep your own part, God says what he will do in return will be so much, you begin to run away from the blessing. You say this is too much. And then the blessing will pursue you and overtake you. It's there. It's written. He said, this blessing shall come on thee. And then when you say, this is too much, and you begin to run, the blessings will run faster and overtake you. If you read it further, before you get to verse 13, it says, he will command the blessing. And you know, when God commands, it is done. But he says, this covenant is based on you fulfill your part, then I fulfill my part. It's, and he stated it clearly. First and foremost, you will hearken to my voice. And as I've told you, at least some of you in the past, to hearken is different from to listen. To hearken means you listen intently as if your life depends on it. You hear every bit of the word spoken. I gave an illustration, at least to some, some of you in the past, that when I was at Elisha Grammar School, we had a geography teacher very nice man, gone to heaven now. When he's teaching us in the class, we just take notes. We don't pay much attention. Why? Because the day before examination, he will call us together for what he calls last minute revision. And then he will ask us, ask any questions, any part of what I've taught you that you don't understand. And then we will begin to ask questions. Uh, what's the difference between Sahara Desert and Kalahari Desert, and so on and so forth. And then he will go and explain in details. Tomorrow morning, when you open your examination questions, the questions will be the questions you asked him yesterday. The first question will be, what is the difference between Sahara Desert and Kalahari Desert? The question you asked yesterday is what is going to repeat in the exam tomorrow. So. Whenever he calls us to come for the last day uh, revision, we don't listen to him, we hack him. 
We pay attention to everything he says because we know that is what is coming tomorrow. How many of you from now on we hearken to God? Let me hear you say amen. And then he says, you will not just hacking, you will hacking diligently. You will not just be listening carefully, you will do it with all your strength. He said, you must hacking diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. And then you must observe what he says, and you must do all his commandments, not some. He said, you to do that, leave the rest to me. For example, in 1 Kings chapter 17, from verse 8 to 16, 1 Kings 17, 8 to 16, when the prophet of God came to the womb, widow of Zarepa, at first he said, give me a cup of water. Yes, sir. As she was going, she said, hey, add just a little bit of cake to that. Ah, sorry, sir, I would have loved to obey you, but there's only one meal left for me and my child to prepare, eat, and then die. The man of God then said, do my own first. See attention to details, happening. It is then that the man of God now said, if you do what I've just told you, you will never be hungry again. The woman hearkened. The woman observed. The woman did as the man of God said. And while others were dying of hunger, herself and her son lived in abundance throughout the famine. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 to 10, Proverbs 3, verse 9 to 10, when the Almighty God said, Honor me with thy substance, and the first fruit of all the increase, he puts the word all there. He expects you to hearken. He expects you to pay attention to details. He said, then, watch me in action. Watch me in action. And then you will observe that I will respond in such a way you will say this is too much. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, he said, bring ye all the tight into my house. He said, all, not some. And he said, you have to bring it. He didn't ask you to send it through your servant. Bring it yourself. Pay attention. Because it's a covenant. When you are dealing with a covenant, you have to be careful. And then he said, then watch me respond. And I want to assure you of one thing. God is not a miser. God is not stingy. Do what he says, and he will embarrass you. That's my God. Psalm 
since I learned these details and I began to practice them, he had been doing exactly what he said he would do. I've told you before, I'm not boasting. I'm just, if I'm boasting, I'm boasting of the power of my God to do what he says he will do. Years ago, when we were going to hold the first Congress ever, when it just came to my mind, I can invite all students to come together and study the Word of God while first act is going on in Lagos and schools are on holidays. And I invited all, I wrote to all secondary school, all teacher training colleges. I got their addresses from WAEC, wrote to all of them. I said, come to Elisha Grammar School. I chose Elisha Grammar School because it was my school and I know there's room in the body house there. Come. Let's sit down and listen to God. And then I boldly said, you will be fed free of charge. I was doing that by faith. I didn't know how many people would be coming. Uh, after I've done that, it just occurred to me, wait a minute, where are you going to get the money? I sold my first car ever. Not that it, the money was enough, but at least I started. And God responded. There was a time I stood here. Some of you were there then. And I begged you. I said, don't buy me any more cars. Because I have just given out 12 cars so that there would be room in my backyard. I said, I don't want any more. I got home after I left here and I met two brand new cars. And I said to the boys who brought them, I told you I don't want more cars. They said to me, we've already bought our own before you made the announcement. That is my God. There is somebody listening to me right now. God is going to embarrass you with blessings. I'm talking from experience. This is not theory. This is something that I have practiced and has worked. Um, if I want to dazzle you like uh, some preachers will do, I can say in, the, in, in Greek, this is what is written. In Hebrew, this is, because I know you don't know Greek, you don't know Hebrew. That's why I don't say Greek, I don't say Hebrew, I say English. So that we can all understand. Several years ago, 2 a.m. in the night, somebody woke me up, one of the members of the church, a general in the army, and he brought a limousine, Mercedes car with six doors, and said, God wants me to give this to you. I said, me? He said, yes. He said, because this is the best I have. <laughs> okay, number one, why do you have to come at 2 a.m.? He said, because if I wait till tomorrow morning, Satan will convince me not to bring it. That's why I brought it at 2 a.m. Okay, if you say God said it, I took it from him. And I prayed for him. But after he left, I said to God, Almighty God, you know all things. I can't ride in this thing. Imagine me going to a butemeta in a car with six doors. 
And I'm talking of more than 30 years ago. So I said, please, Father, allow me to sell this car. Because at that time, there were many pastors who do not even have a bicycle. So I can use the money, Lord, to buy a motorcycle for my pastors. And I'm talking to you, brother. I'm not talking to you because I want to uh, persuade you to give me something. <laughs> my source is God. And he's a covenant-keeping God. He said to me, it is yours now. You can do what you like with it. Uh -huh. Thank you, Daddy. I sold the car. And I used the money to buy motorcycles for my pastors. God responded. Shortly after, God responded. And someone brought to me three Mercedes-Benz cars in one day. You don't want the long one? All right, let me break it down to three. <laughs> I decree in the name that's above every other name, beginning from now, my God will embarrass you with blessings. Now, if you read this Deuteronomy chapter 28, and I, I want you to go home, study very carefully, you will see that the abundance that God wants to give you is abundance that will be secure. How? He says in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 5, Proverbs 23, verse 5, he said, riches can make themselves wings and fly away. In other words, prosperity may not last. Some people may be rich today and become poor tomorrow. You know some people like that. But if it is the one that comes from God, it will not develop wings. They won't fly anywhere. He said in Malachi chapter 3, immediately after verse 10, which is verse 11, Malachi 3 verse 11, where after he had said, bring all the tithes into my house, he said, I will rebuke devourers for your sake. In other words, he says, the blessing I'm going to give you, nothing can destroy it. Nothing can steal from it. It's not possible. Some years ago, when we were still living in Mushi, a driver, as soon as he dropped uh, the members of the family, decided to steal away the car. We didn't know what was happening, but he was, he just zoomed off with the car. Before we knew what was happening, we only got a telephone call from the police. We have recovered your car. Ah. We didn't know we lost a car. You know what happened? They said they saw the way he was driving, the speed with which he was driving. And so they chased him and caught up with him. Why? They said no driver from the redeemed Christian Church of God would drive this fast. So while we were at home, not knowing that the car had been stolen, it was already recovered. I decree in the name that's above every other name, anything that the enemy has stolen from you will be recovered. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 23, verse 25, Exodus 23, verse 25, he said, 
serve God. He will bless your bread. He will bless your waters. That's what he said. In other words, he said, if you will do his will, the blessing that you are going to have will come directly from God and your riches will be blessed, not cursed. When God pronounces a blessing on whatever you have, it can only multiply, it cannot decrease. As a matter of fact, in Joel chapter 2, from verse 15 to 27, Joel 2, 15 to 27, he says, if you will even repent now, if you say, no, I, I didn't know this before. I have not been paying my tithe fully. Uh, when, I give, when I say I give first fruit, I, I keep a little bit behind. But now I want to repent. He said, I will restore all the years that the canker worm had eaten. That's what he said. So it is all really up to you. How do you want to be blessed? Casually or abundantly? It's up to you. When the word of God says he will prosper you so mightily that you will be lending to nations because it's part of the covenant, you can ask yourself, how can any man be so rich as to be blessing nations. How possible? Well, come to the redeemed Christian Church of God and find out. When I became general of Asia, at the end of the month, at least I can remember the first month very well, the total income was less than the salary of myself, where I was coming from. And there were 39 members of staff to pay. Because by the time I finished paying those people, there was nothing for me. We were very rich then. <laughs> Today, by the grace of God, we have missionaries in more than 190 nations of the world. We are paying their salaries. We are paying their house rent. We are paying for the school fees of their children. We are lending to nations. And whether you believe it or not, I am saying it now. It is a decree from this holy altar that a day is coming. One of you will come to me at the beginning of the year and say, Daddy, what is the budget for this year? do you need in Naira? How much do you need in dollar? How much do you need in euro? How much do you need in pound sterling? Just tell me. Who is the one I'm talking about? Let that hallelujah coming from you be louder than that of your friend. That's the covenant, the covenant of prosperity. That's why don't use shortcuts. It won't get you anywhere. Don't steal. Don't defraud. Don't corner some money that is not yours. Don't bring a cost into your income. God said it, Jeremiah 17, verse 11. Jeremiah 17, verse 11, he said, Patrick sees on eggs, but never hatch them. Why? Only God knows. But he said, that is the same way anybody who collects, who gathers wealth, illegitimate, 
is going to die suddenly, will not spend the money, and at the end will be a fool. Don't do, don't use human method. Do God's will, follow his covenant. Obey him and leave the rest to him. It's a covenant keeping God. If you believe that, let me hear you say amen. amen. I told my children, when you hear me pray, and it's any time they say, let, let everybody ask for something special from God. I have only one prayer. Only one. What's, the pro, what's that one? God, don't let me ever offend you. That's my own special request. Why? If I can just do what he asked me to do. <laughs> He said it in that same covenant. You can read it, Deuteronomy 20, verse 7. He said, the enemy that will come against you will be smitten before your face. When, when you follow his covenant, when he begins to bless you, and some people begin to envy you, if they are not careful, he will kill them. That's the meaning. If somebody suddenly sees you and say, is it not this boy that used to beg me for a lift and now he's riding a Rolls Royce? Yeah, somebody got it. God will say to him, shut your mouth or you are dead. I'm not the one who said so. It is in the covenant. It is written. And forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. Stand on your feet and shout hallelujah to God. And this covenant is between God and his children. So if you are not a child of God, if you are not born again, and you are expecting that the covenant keeping God is going to suddenly begin to bless you, na lie. That's the first thing you must do is you must surrender your life to him because he knows that if he gives prosperity to a sinner, the Bible made it clear, the prosperity of a fool will destroy him. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, come this morning. Come and surrender to him. It's a covenant-keeping God who can make you healthy and make you prosperous and protect you from all evil. And he's calling you now. I'm going to count from one to five. If you want to surrender to your life to Jesus Christ, come to the altar. And I will pray for your salvation. And you can become part of the covenant of the Almighty God. I'm counting now. One. Two. Three. He's a covenant-keeping God. He says, if you come unto me, I will no wise cast you out. That's what he said. So you come to him for salvation, he will save your soul. If you want to be part of his family, you are welcome. If you come to him, he will save your soul, he will give you a new name. He will write your name in the book of life. And you can begin to enjoy all these covenants. Four. Five. 
Thank you very much. So those of you who are already in front, cry to Jesus Christ. Ask him to save your soul. Tell him I will serve you for the rest of my life. I will put you first in everything. And those of you on the way, pray the same prayer. And now the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards these our new brothers and sisters and pray for them that the one who has saved our souls will save their own souls also. Please intercede for them for two minutes. Say, Lord, have mercy on these people. Receive them. Please, Lord, receive them into the family of God. Let your blood wash away their sins so that they too can begin to enjoy your covenant. Father, please save their souls. And those of you who are still on the way, I have to hurry up now because I want to pray for salvation. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Savior, I want to thank you for your word. I want to thank you because I know you are a faithful God, and I know your word is forever settled. You promise that whosoever will come unto you, you will no wise cast out. These people have come to you now, Father. Please receive them in Jesus' name. Amen. Save their souls. Amen. Let your blood wash away their sins. And Lord, I pray that from now on, as they join the family of God, you will continue to extend to them all the benefits of your covenant in Jesus' name. So whenever they call on you, please answer them by fire. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, those of you who have come forward, I rejoice with you. From now on, I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer request. So if you turn to your left, you see somebody there lifting up a placard. Uh, follow him. He will take you to where some pastors are waiting. They will collect the information I want, and they will bring you back very quickly. God bless you. You can begin to go now. Let's give the Lord a big, big round of applause as they begin to go. Whenever you are clapping for God, do it as if you mean it. Uh, thank you, Father. Now, you are going to show him that you are going to begin to obey him completely from now on. When he asks you to give, he didn't call, it's not by compulsion. He simply says, give and you shall be given. So if you don't want to give, no quarrel. But he says, if you are going to give and get results, you must give cheerfully. He says he's a cheerful, a lover of cheerful givers. So with great joy, you take whatever is your offering and lift up to the Almighty God and say, Lord, I'm giving you cheerfully very, very soon. Let me begin to reap. Go ahead, lift the offering to him and talk to the Almighty God. Say, so, Lord, I am not giving grudgingly. I am giving you cheerfully. Very, very soon, let the harvest begin to come. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, so you dance forward to the nearest basket to you and drop your offering. Dance forward and give him your offering, and then we'll pray the closing prayer before you go. Over to you, man. See you want the Lord, I'll 
God's door. See what the Lord has done. What we waited for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. Has done. See what my Savior has done. What we went before has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. Oh, hallelujah. See, see what the Lord has done. Come on, every sing it. Too. See what the Lord has done. Yeah. Amen. This morning we are going to do things slightly differently. I want everyone to come close to the altar. Everyone. And I want you to ask God for something very big. Something that you know will make your joy overflow. You have two minutes. Go ahead. Ask him. It's a covenant keeping God. Ask him for something big, something only God.
You can hear. I s Please d give us volume before the altar. I just ask you to ask God, ask God for something big, something only God can do. Ask him to bless you beyond your widest imaginations. Ask God for something big, something only God can do. Something beyond human imaginations. Something that the Almighty alone can do. kind of miracle you've never seen before, you've never heard before. Ask him this morning. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Yeah. Covenant keeping God, I thank you this morning. Because I know from now on, for all these your children, things will be different. Father, bless them. Amen. Bless them beyond measure. Amen. Embarrass them with your blessings. Amen. Embarrass them with your miracles. Amen. Give them mighty testimonies. Amen. The kind of testimonies that will be so big that people will say, can this be true? Father, give to this your children. <laughs> Covenant keeping God. Every prophecy that had ever gone in the direction of this your children fulfilled this month. The kind of blessing that they will say, God, this is too much. Release upon them. Release upon their families. Release upon their children. I pray that this your children will never lack. That they will never borrow. They will be lending to nations. As big as it may sound, because we are the covenant keeping God, before the end of this year, let one of them come and ask for the budget.
Let it be well with them. Make them whole. Let them be full of joy. Bless their bread. Bless their waters. And no matter how fast they run from this blessing, let the blessing overtake them. Please receive their offering this morning. Sanctify it. Use it for your glory. And the grace to serve you. Almighty God, release unto them. The grace to obey you completely. Father, release unto them. Even before they get home today, let the miracles begin. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Well, let someone shout hallelujah. God bless you. You can go home rejoicing now.